Hey everyone, welcome to another Broken Evil Tap 10. Yes, these are still coming out, don't worry, I haven't forgotten about these Tap 10s. It's just, obviously, because of Essen and Christmas, there's a lot of games to get reviewed, a lot of videos to put out, and obviously, during this time, I've somehow got to find time to train up for Season 3, and all the uh, extra, like, tra you know, Photoshop and Audition and Premiere Pro that I've got to learn how to use. You know, I'm still on Camtasia at the moment. So, yep, there's a lot to do. Top 10s, though, are still coming. And thankfully, I've got a nice backlog of suggestions. So I don't desperately need more ideas right now, but there's like about probably another two or three in this uh, little black book I've still yet to do. But hopefully you enjoyed my five player one. This is my top 10 stressful games. Yes, yeah, stressful, but in a good way. You know, a bad game will stress me out, but that's because the game's bad. You know, you want to see me like angry and stressed out, you get me to play Concordia or Food Chain Magnet anytime soon, and then yeah, I'll be like, Arr! but that's because I hate the game. I don't, <laughs> that's not a good way to enjoy a game. I'm talking about stressful in a good sense, where you have that high degree of tension or like, angst, turn angst, tension, or like, oh my god, no, 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 ah! and you know, and it may be continuous, it may be just short bursts. But it's, it's, it's done in such a way that you remember the game. Or when you get a chance to relax, you're like, oh, 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 that was good. That was fun. Or something. It's a bit like going on a roller coaster. You know, you get stressed out going on a roller coaster because it's like, ah, you know, going, flying around all over the place. But when you come off the roller coaster, you're like, that was good. Oh, yeah. Let's go again. And it's a bit like that. Short burst, continuous, doesn't matter. And there's quite a few, I had a bit of a short list to pick from, but uh, these are my 10 favorite games that I feel give me a decent amount of stress, tension, angst, or whatever during a board game. Let's crack on. My number 10 is a two-player Cosmos card game. Yeah, that doesn't sound like something that should get you that stressed. But with this one, I've played it many times with, you know, ex-girlfriends in the past and with other players. And even as simple as this game is by Rainer Knizia, there's still a lot of tension and stress that is going through the game as you're drawing the cards and trying to figure out what your opponent needs, but also you're trying to fulfill your own goals, but not give away cards that you know your opponent needs. And that is just the classic Lost Cities. Lost Cities, Cosmos, two-player, Rainer Knizia, Nice and straightforward. All you're doing is basically collecting cards of five different suits and you're playing them in ascending numerical order. But you, if you play a seven, for example, you then can't play the six, five, or whatever before it. You're trying to score as many points as you can in each particular category and there's a minimum cost for the expedition. There's not much of a theme here. But while you're playing these cards, you sometimes have to discard some and you don't want to discard ones that you know your, your opponent wants but they're thinking that as well. But you don't know if they're holding cards that you need in their hand. And there's a deck of cards you've got to draw from, so it's like, oh, I don't know when I do it. And throughout the whole game, you're stressed out trying to think, oh, should I go for it or should I not? I don't know. Arr. And it's a good solid stress, but you will get those times, and it happens in most of the games where you'll be you'll be hanging on to like the, the green cards, and it's just like, you know, it's like, Oh, that, that, I've just played my green six, and you know, I think, where's that seven? I've been drawing, I've been drawing. Where is that seven? She got it. No, she hasn't got it. She hasn't got it. Uh, there's no seven in there. She's got it. I've, I've got no choice. I'm going to play my eight. You play the eight, you draw the seven. Ah! Stressful like central, but you know, good, solid, easy to learn two player card game. Works great with your spouse and that. Give it a try. Last Cities, number 10. Number nine is stressful for a short period of time, so it's not a particularly long game, but this is the poster child for the mechanic which designates that your opponent beat you because you gave them the move they needed to beat you. It was like, you beat you, however that makes sense. And this is the great two-player abstract, Camisado. I mean, this is Camisado Max. Forget the max bit, I don't care about the extra towers and the rooks or whatever. I just talk about the base version of Camisado. You have these towers, each of a different color on this board, which looks like a chessboard, but it's all multicolored. And the idea is very simple. Get one of your towers to the opposing end of the board. Okay, how's that difficult? Well, when you move a tower and it has to go forward or diagonal, forwards, can't go backwards, 
where whichever colored space you land on is the color of the tower your opponent is then allowed to move. And it goes on and on like so. So I move my green tower to a yellow square. He moves his yellow tower to a purple square. I move my purple tower to a green square. And you're constantly doing this back and forth, but you can see as you're going through, if I move it to that one, he's gonna to move to there, oh, and he's gonna win with that one. So your options get limited, more limited as the game goes on, but you are constantly in stress city with this one. It's always thinking like, uh, if I move it there, have I just basically shut myself in the foot? You know, did I just give him exactly what I needed? And then when you realize that the opponent is goading you into the various locations, you know, it's like, if I move to there, I know he's gonna move that tower, and if he moves it to blue or orange, haha, I've got him. You know, there's a lot of that. But even once you the game ends, and you realize your mistake, that's like the ultimate bit of stress, where you go, you move your tower, and it's like, right, on the red square, that'll do, and ah, oh, no. And then they move their red tower, and it, it ends the game, and you lose. It's a good amount of stress that you're constantly in thinking that you know you've got to move this tower, but you don't want to move it to any square because you feel that wherever you move this tower, your opponent knows you're going to move it there or wants you to move it there. So you always think that they've got an upper hand on you. And of course, they're thinking the exact same thing. So both of you are in turn angst trying to think, oh, where do I want to move this tower? Nice and quick though, because once you've got over that little bit of stress, like, oh, and you beat me, well, just rinse it up and go again. Nice and simple. It's, a, I mean, it's simpler than things like chess and that. It's basically as bad as symbols, checkers. It's a straightforward game, but it looks the part. Great, underrated two-player abstract, Camasado. My number eight, and this is gonna be a, I don't know, would this be a recurring theme? It's certainly gonna be twice on here that's a recurring theme. And that is role selection. Role selection can be quite a stressful mechanic in a game, but it depends on what the roles do. When the role can potentially like alienate you for a turn or kill you off or do something negative, you've always got that stress knowing that, that whichever role you pick, there's a role out there that could potentially hose you over and you're trying to stay hidden. My poster child for this is one of my first games of the modern era that I played and still one of my favorites to date. Citadels, yes, and th those of you who have played this game know exactly what I'm talking about. Here, you pick a role each round, and then you do some simple building and, you know, different actions with your card. But, the role dictates an extra power you get on your turn, and two of them in particular are the Assassin and the Thief. There's extras in here, but the one and two cards are always bad. And there's also a Warlord as well that can particularly screw you over, but the Assassin and the Thief those cards just designate a player or a character and you basically rob from them or you kill them. Killing you off gets you or like makes you lose a turn and the thief robs all your, all your money. So you're always, if you're not picking that one yourself, and even if you're the thief, you've still got a fear of the assassin. If you're the assassin, you fear nothing, which is great. But all you're doing is killing off someone else. So there's the downside. But if I know those two characters aren't there, like if I get my hand of cards because you're drafting these roles and I don't see the assassin and thief in there, instantly I'm stressed because suddenly I know that they've been picked or at least one of them has. And I need to think, are they going after me? And as I look at my four gold in front of me, it's like, yeah, the thief's out there. He's coming for me. Who does he think I'm gonna pick? No, the merchant's too, oh no, no, the merchant's too likely. Um. Maybe, maybe I'll take the bishop. Nobody wants to be the bishop. But then he knows that. Maybe he's going to do a double bluff on me. It's like, and you're stressed out just choosing. And then you choose your role. And then the as thief or assassin reveals himself. And you are just sat there. Like, don't pick me, don't pick me, don't pick me. It's like, uh, like sweat, sweat bee coming down your face as you're waiting for them to designate it. And even though you're not supposed to reveal when you've been killed or like stolen from, you have to resist the urge that the second they say the character name, like I'm gonna steal from the king, and it's either the you know, anger inducing, or it's that sigh of relief of, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. But you can't reveal it. It's, it's more stressful trying to hide the fact that you've got away or you've been caught than it is trying to avoid it in the first place. So 
It's a good healthy stress. I have managed to, I think a friend of mine actually refuses to play this ever again because she got so predictable that I was able to, to assassinate her three times in a row. And you may think, well, Luke, why didn't you uh, lay off on her? You know, she was new to the game. Why didn't you? Because she's a friend of mine. And I thought it was funny. It was hilarious. So, you know, three times of the assassin and now she won't play it ever again. So, you know, it has that effect. But I love it, still love this game. It's like somewhere halfway up my top 100. Great addition, this 2016 version, but the classic's still good. Citadel's stress-inducing. My number seven is a game I have not played for some time, I have to admit, but this is one of my favorites from Space Cowboys and Matthew Dunstan. And the main reason this is stressful is because when you play a worker placement game, you're all thinking like, oh, don't go to that space, don't go to that space, you're gonna nick it, oh. This one, it's slightly different. You're selecting cards, but you have a very limited scope of which cards you can select, and it's all based on these four color pillars. Some of you have probably already guessed it by now, but I really want to get this game to the table again, because it's such a fun game. Elysium. In this one, you have a, a tableau of cards that you're trying to build up in front of you. You're trying to get combos, get victory points, that kind of thing. And you're either putting them above your Elysium, which means you get the bonuses and the uh, special abilities, or you're putting them into your Elysium, which means you get the victory points later for set collection. But the selection of the cards themselves, as well as your player order for next round, is dictated by four color pillars, red, blue, uh, red, blue, green, yellow. And the idea is, is that the cards have got a cost on them and you can only take that card or, you know, turn order tile if you have the pillar in front of you of those colors or color, you know, one, two or three, it varies. And you are constantly thinking, I can get that card then, then that card, then that tile, and then that, and then we're good. But you've got other players drawing from the same tableau. And it is stressful as all get out to sit there and wait for them. It's like, didn't take my card, didn't take my card. Good, didn't take my card. Didn't take my card. Took that! <laughs> you know, and suddenly your whole plan falls apart as the card you want is taken, and then you think, um, okay, I'll take this one then, that'll be fine, and I lose my green pillar, that'll be great. And then you get on and you realize that you've just shot yourself in the foot because you couldn't think of a backup plan or someone's taken another card you want. It's a very stressful period of choosing those cards and the tile because not getting what you want can be pretty punishing but it's a good healthy amount of stress. I mean, it keeps you engaged. You constantly have to think of backup plans because you can't afford to just think, I'm gonna get that, 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 and then that. Yeah, great, all will go to bed. Yeah, best laid plans of mice and men in this go wrong pretty much every round. So you have to have ideas behind ideas behind backup plans. And it's just a great engaging but stressful environment to deal with that tableau selection. The rest of the game with the abilities and the uh, like Elysium building is pretty normal, but just trying to get the cards you need, build up those combos, get the sets, like I need another three in this, or I need another purple in this set, and it's like, oh, there's the only purple there. It's mine, it's mine, it's mine. Oh, okay, got it, got it, got it, good. You know, plan B, oh, damn, plan B's gone to, gone to, oh no, now what? You know, it's, it's constantly like that throughout the game. It's a solid one. It doesn't get anywhere near the love and buzz that it used to when it first came out. I think it really could do maybe with an expansion just to add more variety to the gods you're using, but really I need to get this to the table again because it's it's an underrated tile. I feel this needs a resurgence because it is a solid game. Probably one of my favorites from Space Cowboys, Elysium. Now my number six is a little bit of a cheat because I'm putting two games on this number and that's because the two games are pretty similar for the reason that they're at my number six. Both of them involve the same aspect, which is I like to be a certain character in these games and being that character means you can't talk. And by not talking, yeah, 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 get all your chat box uh, jokes out of the way, but by not being able to talk, you have to try and guide the rest of the players to a certain goal, but in doing so, you're limited as to how you can do it, and throughout the whole game, you're listening to what the other players are discussing, what they're debating, and you've managed to get, say, one or two of them on your wavelength, and then another person comes in and tries to throw them off, and all you can do in your head is curse them, judge them, and just generally hate them, because you can't react. And this is either Deception Murder in Hong Kong, or the game that I'm gonna get because it's conveniently behind me and the other one's in the other room, Mysterium. 
Yes, I'm talking about the forensic scientist from Deception and the ghost from Mysterium. I love being those two characters. They are easily my favorite. And some people hate being them. Some people hate being the ghost in this. I love it. I get that cool. I got to select all the cards. I got to think like the other players, you know, what are they going to think? Are they going to get my clues? And I just seem to love that little aspect of stress where you sit there and you just quietly curse everybody at the table for not getting it. You know, you can say whether it's a bad ghost or bad players, but it's brilliant when you get different players, you know, it, even code names you could argue as this thing, where you're the clue giver and you listen to the other players debating and you hear the one person get it, one person not. And you're like, yes. Mm, Daniel, you have done well. You have done well, Daniel, son. Yes, you, 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 people will praise your name when this is done. And it's like, shut up, Meg. As, as, as somebody comes in and tries to throw them off the wavelength, whether it's uh, like one of the enemies in Deception or whether it's a teammate who just didn't get your card and goes, well, maybe you should think about this. It's like, no, maybe you should just be quiet. It's like constantly there. But I love it. It just keeps me involved. I don't have to sit there and just go you know, twiddle on my thumbs or anything. No, I'm sitting there listening and cursing and judging, and it's so much fun. Mysterium, Deception and Murder in Hong Kong, whatever version you want, they're both great games, both in my collection. Number six. My number five, I don't even own. I'm thinking of getting a copy of this, but I know a couple of people who already have it, and I'm not even sure if I can get it in the shops right now. I'll have to find out. But this is another role selection game. So I mentioned Citadels earlier. This is a very stressful role selection game, but it's a good amount of stress. It's engaging. And even though you'll have almost anger inducing moments of Argh! it's done in a light way. I mean, I don't, I don't get angry in games generally, you know, unless I'm playing a really bad one. But so, you know, if I'm playing a game, I'm getting like stress, like I'm gonna kill you. That's just me enjoying the game. I'm just getting immersed in it. I'm not trying to like, you know, spread hate or anything like that. You know, if I, if, if I say I'm gonna kill you, you know, I don't literally mean that. It's just, you know, you got me, you screwed me over, well done, but still hate you. It's, <laughs> this is very much the case in Broom Service. Broom Service has you deciding on a role in order to have your witches travel over this map and deliver potions. It's a fairly simple gateway level game in a sense. Well, maybe not gateway, but certainly a, an introductory game of sorts. And it's a very neat little game. But why is it stressful? Because if you're playing with, well, I mean, even if you're playing with fewer players, it still happens. But particularly when you get to the four and five player count, you have these roles and they have a great action and a mediocre action. I forget the name. I think it's brave action and cowardly action or something like that. And the idea is, is that the brave one's always better than the cowardly. But you go in turn order, choosing a role. And if you are brave enough to think, all right, I am the mountain witch and I'm going to do the brave action. You're hoping that the person after you in the line does not also have the Mountain Witch played. Because if they do, they can play it, take the brave action, and you get diddly squat. It is stress city times 10 on toast when you have that point where you've gone first or second in a round of four or five people and you really want to play this card, but you can't decide whether you should go cowardly or not. You're thinking, there's no way he would need it. Why would he need that card? But he could do it. He's looking at me. He knows I want to play it. You know it. And you play it. And even after you've played it, it doesn't matter. Because, you know, you'll play it and you'll go, right, I'm brave. I'm the Mountain Witch. Okay? No one, please, screw this up. Oh, phew. Brave Mountain Witch. Yeah, go. But then the opposite happens when you play something like the, I don't know, the Alchemist or something like that, that... You know, oh, I can generate more green potions. Great, a farmer or something. I forget what they're called. And it's like, I, I'm the brave farming witch or something. And it's like, ah, good, good. Now, I'm the brave farming witch. I'm gonna... <laughs> it's like, it's a flip the table moment. But it's stress when you're waiting to see whether you've got away with that brave action. It's stress just thinking about whether you should be brave or cowardly. Either way, it's good level of stress. Now, a caveat, if you're easily angered by games, you might want to maybe stay away from this one because if you thought Citadels could enrage you, oh my God, Broom Service can really enrage you. But take it for the light game it is and just accept that there's an element of randomness and just an element of that bluffing and sort of second guessing people. But wow, stressful, very stressful. But a quality game, Broom Service, will it eventually hit my collection? I don't know, we'll see. 
get me to the next Patreon goal, you know, where I get to, where you get to choose a game for me to review, and maybe we can make that the first one, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Anyway, on to the next one. For my number four, we're getting on to party games. Yes, even party games can be pretty stressful. And this is very much like those sort of party games that you probably played as a kid in the past with your family or something like that, you know, from the 80s and 90s. But this is my favorite of all those. Here's a clue. I'm going to describe it to you. But here's some limitations. That style of party game most people are familiar with. But boy. They can get pretty stressful, as you're constantly trying to describe something to your partner and they're just not getting it. Or vice versa, when you're the partner sitting there and the clue giver is kind of silent because they can't think of what to say, and it's just... Time's up, man! <laughs> that is time's up. You know, on top of the fact that you've only got a 30 second timer in this, it's stressful when you're giving the clues because you gotta try and say it as fast as you can. Even though you're getting those 40 clues and you're using them over and over again, that's the cool thing with this, the fact that you always use the same 40 clues for every round of the game, it's really great. But, whew, yeah, you can get pretty stressed out with your partner doing this or your teammates, you know, whether you're good at clue giving or bad at receiving them, you know, whatever. But it can be pretty stressful when you're playing this. Love it to bits though. It's one of my favorite party games. It's, you know, it's simple premise. Just describe the clue, but in the first round, you can say what you like, but you can't say the word, um, and you can't pass. Second round, you can pass, but you're only allowed to say one word only. And the third round, you've got to do charades. So your options of how you describe the word get more limited, but because you always use the same 40 clues in each round, the moments of how you got the clues in the previous rounds are in your memory and you remember what cards there are and suddenly, no matter how limited the options are, you still trigger something in your memory, but it can lead to some hilarious outcomes. But yeah, 30 seconds to describe your clues, teammates who just may not get it, the, the fact that you're against the clock anyway, oh, it's stressful, but great fun. One of my favorite party games, Time's Up, specifically Title Recall. My favorite of the lot, definitely the one that I want. I don't want the other title recalls. This is the one that I have an easier time teaching, an easier time using, just works so well. Now this one you might think, come on, this titchy little card game for two players, you already had Lost Cities. Well, how can this one be stressful? Have you played this game? Sam Healy went on about this game so much. Everybody thinks he's got like an em he's like an Emperor S4 fanboy. Maybe he is. But <laughs> Emperor S4 put out some great games. This two player though, once I tried it, I'm like, wow, he's right. This is an amazing game. So much that I think it hit my top 10. But wow, it's stressful. Because you've only got four actions to do on each round. And there's no right or one way to do the order of the actions. Because you choose what order you want to do them. But you'll hate yourself. Every time, every time you choose one of those actions, you hate the fact you made that choice and you regret it later on, no matter what. There is a good amount of healthy fun stress in Hannah Makoji. Yeah, believe it, Hannah Makoji. Because think about it, those four actions, you know, save a card for later, scrap two out of the round, uh, give three cards, they pick one, you get two, put two pairs down, they take a pair, you take a pair. You've got to give your opponent cards, and you never want to do that when you're in this game. So each action that you do, you're thinking, well, if I do that action first, I've got more options. But then the action that I do last, I'm pretty much limited on those options. And as you go through, even though it's just four actions, that's all you got to do. Just four actions, and the round's done. What is there to be stressed about? <laughs> Play this game and find out. You're constantly there thinking like, you know, I've got these cards, but I don't want to give them that one. But maybe if I offered this pair, he'll pick that pair. What's he hanging on to? What card did you put under there? What did you put under there? You know, I want to look at his one token. You know, it's like, what did you hide? What are you hiding from me? And they're thinking this as well. So they've got the same amount of stress. There's one card out of the round. So you never have perfect information. So you still got that slight issue. And whew. It's one of the reasons I love this game so much and why I'm starting to look at other Emperor S4 games now. It's, I mean, this one's quite a worn copy the amount of times I've uh, used it, but wow. Such good entertainment in a two-player card game from 2013, no less. It's, it's, it's one of those ones that you've just got to play it to believe it. It's hard for me to describe the stress in this, but when you're 
trying to think about those four actions and you can't decide which one to do and you think, I picked the number one and number three first, that's good. And, oh, why didn't I do four earlier? Why have I got to do it now? And it's just, you hate yourself for every decision that you make and that just keeps a nice continuous level of stress that only dissipates when you set up the next round. It's a solid game, one of my favorites. There's only two games I can think of that stress me out in a good way more than this. Timed games can definitely be like a, you know, stressful experience for me. This is still in my top 100, it is slipping, it's slipping, but you know, I still enjoy this one a lot and the level of stress it gives me, oh my god. I mean, the whole idea of this list is not that, oh yeah, these are my just 10 favorite games that happen to cause me stress. No, I'm balancing out how much I love the game with how much I get stressed by it. I still really like this game, but wow, against the clock with the app, one of the best app integrations for a board game, as you and up to three other players, and believe me, if you do this by yourself, it is stress overload, but you know, do it with other players and you've got to like guide them. It's like, you, take this card, choose between the two. And it's like, uh, um, I don't know, uh, that one. And you, pick the defenses for the base. Well, I don't know, how many have we got? How much money have we got? And uh, I don't know, I've got like 10 million, I'm not sure. And, and everyone is stressed out during the timed phase of, you guessed it, X count the board game. Yes, still enjoy this. I mean, the computer games are so much fun, but even the board game is great fun. To use that app with the realistic, you know, realistic, the authentic sound effects from the game, but that time phase where the app is ticking down the clock and you've only got like a, what, like 10 seconds to do whatever your station action is, be it deciding what you're gonna research, what you're gonna go on the mission with, what you're gonna defend the planet from UFOs with, what interceptors you're gonna send out and defend the planet. It's, loads of different things that you got to think about and you just haven't got the time to think about it or even discuss it. You've got your 10 seconds, it's like, you know, well, should I use this guy to defend the base? I don't know, I don't care, you've got three seconds, go! And it's just constantly ticking, the ambient music helps with the atmosphere and the only time you get a chance to rest is in the second part of the round where it goes boo, and then you resolve all the stuff that you've done and regret every single choice you made. Yeah, there's a lot of dice rolling, so the dice can hose you in this as well, but that initial planning step with the timed app, oh God, it's stressful, and that's with four of you. You do this with two of you or three of you and you've got multiple stations, it is very, even more stressful. You do this by yourself, I swear this is capable of giving people heart attacks. It is that stressful when you try to do all four stations by yourself, and I have done that. Wow, <laughs> yeah, surprising my heart is still in the condition it is now, which is, you know, it could be better, but whew, you know, yeah, definitely you want Stress Central, you go for XCOM. The only reason this isn't my number one is because there's another game that stresses me out about as much as this one that I enjoy a bit more. So what possibly beats a timed app against the clock? And the answer to that question is a hidden movement game. Yes, hidden movement can be pretty stressful and I could pick pretty much any hidden movement game to make this list. There's at least three or four I can think of off the top of my head and there's probably more besides. And each one of them could be my number one because hidden movement, especially, uh, not when you're doing the deduction part, this is the caveat. This is because I enjoy being the one who's hidden. Always, I love that role. I like the other roles, but come on, you make me the hidden person, I'll be like, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you but it is stress because you've got to hide from everybody and they'll be going, oh, I think he moved there, you know, if, no, I think no, and you're like, hee hee hee, yes, I'm gonna get away. And then one person comes along, that shut up Meg type person who goes, oh, wait a minute, what if he's over here? And it's like, and he's pointing to exactly where you are on the board and it's like, no, oh, no, no, over here, no, no. And oh my God, the stress. You could pick Fury of Dracula. You could pick Escape from the Aliens and Outer Space. You could pick Letters from Whitechapel, though that's probably my worst of the lot. You could pick Mr. X or whatever, like Scotland Yard or something. But this one is my favorite of all of those games. Spectre Apps. This is Broken Covenant. I've got both. I bought both at the same time when this one came out, just so I could combine the two in a variety because I'm a completionist like that. But yeah, I love that this game. But I mean, the game is great if you're one of the um, bad guys trying to kill the agent, but oh, I love being the agent. 
that, you know, hit a movement, got to get to these locations, complete these objectives, you've got these cool gadgets, you've got an agent with a special ability and each one plays differently, as well as the bad guys, they've all got different people, but it is hard to stay hidden in this game. I mean, if you've managed to stay hidden and undetected for the entire game, then fair pride to you, because how do you manage to do that? Were your opponents just blind? But, you know, you, you're going to get detected at times. They're going to close the net if they're playing properly. They will close the net around you, and you've got to try and slip out of the net, or you've got to accept that you're going to get detected, but you need to get out of the line of fire quick. And, oh my god, while they're discussing where they think you are and where you've been, it's just horrible to sit there because they're looking at you trying to think trying to get the eye movement and the the, the facial expression and watch the uh, beads of sweat down your face as you're just standing there going not there and not there no 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 it's just a cat it's just a cat no 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 just cat just cat it's jonesy just leave cat nice cat meow yeah <laughs> The stress doesn't end once they spot you. The stress just gets even more because now it's like, ah, how do I get out of this? You know, they're, gonna sh they're shooting at me. <laughs> so, yeah, what's going to happen? And oh, yes. So enjoyable. The rules could be a bit more streamlined. They're a little bit fiddly and there are a bit of ambiguities in the rules. But looks the part. It's basically like Metal Gear Solid, the board game in a sense. But I like being the, the bad guys now and again. But... Figuring out where someone is is nowhere near as stressful as being the one that is hidden. And I mean, if it's this one or Fury of Dracula, even though that's a bit too long, second best choice for me would probably be Escape the Agents in Outer Space. Simple, you know, pretty much abstract, but yeah, that's pretty stressful when you're trying to hide from the aliens. But with this one, because it's so hard to stay hidden for the whole time, I mean, you could play Escape from the Aliens in Outer Space and stay hidden the whole game if you're really good or if they're not very good aliens. Here, though, I don't even know how you, how do you manage to stay hidden the entire game? Because somebody's going to figure out. The abilities that the bad guys have are designed to find you. So you have to accept that at some point they're going to close that net and your options are limited. And the more that happens, stress, 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 stress. But in a great way. Love this. Spectre Ups, naturally a number one choice for a game about good stress. Now, of course, it wouldn't be a top 10 if I didn't put my Patreons into the list as well. There were some good choices for this one. I think this is going to be a really good discussion one. You know, I want to know your top 10 stressful games, you know, in a good way, not the anger-inducing ones necessarily. I want to know what gives you a good amount of tension and angst during a game. And I want to hear something a bit more interesting than just simply, oh, Caverna, because somebody might take my spot. No, no, no. I want to hear some good stories from you guys. But Patreons came up with some very good ones, and there were some ties, you know, there were some ones that had an R, but Patreon choice of this time is Magic Maze. Yeah, something that's normally supposed to be for kids, but adults can play this as well. I've played it several times. It is a good, fun co-op game. But yeah, this is a good, solid choice, guys, because, wow, <laughs> this one can be pretty stressful whether you're a kid or an adult. Because in Magic Maze, you're trying to sneak into a shopping mall, collect items, and get out. But it's against the clock. And you have this sand timer that you can potentially flip over, but you're supposed to basically get to certain points, hurry up and complete the bits, flip it over, da -da -da, flip it again, and you're trying to make certain that you don't run out of time. But what really makes this stressful, as if being against the clack wasn't bad enough, you can't talk. So the only way you communicate with each other is each of you has a specific direction or a specific like elevator or door or something you can operate. And everybody knows this, so it's public information. And you're supposed to figure out when you need to do your thing. Like somebody moves a blue pawn to this square here and you're supposed to realize, oh yeah, yeah, he's on an elevator. I better move him up there. That's where he's going. And for the most part, it's still stressful, but it gets to that element. Until you find somebody doesn't quite click as to what they're supposed to do, or hasn't twigged that you need them to do something. And then you have this piece, which I can only describe as... The best way I like to describe it is the pawn of sincere judgment, or the, uh, <laughs> you know, the pawn of divine hatred, or something. I don't know, invent some weird over-the-top name for it. But it's basically a pawn piece that you... It's only, it might as well be a gavel for what you do with it. You basically plunk it in front of a person to highlight to them that you need them to do something. And if they still don't twig, but this results in the player basically picking up the pawn piece. 
<laughs> just like literally banging it on their forehead if need be. But they're constantly like bashing this pawn piece in front of them in order to get them to do something. And that's even more stressful, not even when you're doing it, when it's being done to you. When you haven't twigged that somebody's on an elevator and you need to send them up there and it's kind of like, what are you getting on about? I can't see anything. It's like, stop, stop judging me. It's, like, and it's just horrible to have that. But yep, it's quick, against the clock. It's a co-op, but it's still Stress City. You know, this could have made my top 10. I, I actually did consider this, but it's not a game I own and I like it, but... I think my problem with it is that it's very fragile as the player count. I feel like I have to play it with four players and that's it because then you get like a certain thing each. When you start juggling up the players, it kind of throws the whole thing out of balance. And like I say, I like it. I think it, this could be in the top 20 for me if I was to expand the list. But yeah, good solid Patreon choice, guys. Magic Maze, definitely plenty of stress in that one. So that's it for me. You know, just a couple of uh, honorable mentions to uh, Flam Rouge can be quite stressful by the end when you're like, oh, who's going to win? Who's going to win? It does happen. Uh, Imhotep, a bit like how Elysium works with don't take my card, don't take my card. With Imhotep, somebody might take your boat, and that's just as infuriating. Uh, I mentioned Escape from Aliens and Outer Space already, and that's about it. The rest of them, I had things like Arkham Horror LCG, Ghost Stories, Flashpoint, Ticket to Ride, Key Flower, and... They just didn't really generate enough stress. I think maybe the best honorable mention on it, maybe Ethnos was a tempting one, but Ethnos is only stressful when those dragon cards come up at the end, so I didn't know that it made the list. So, like I say, top 10 games that cause me stress in a good way. I want to hear your thoughts. So, this should be an interesting one in the debate comments, but uh, if you like what you see, find me on Facebook, Twitter, at the convention, or subscribe to the channel, or on Patreon. Anything's all a good thing. So... I'm going to go and calm down now by heading off to the gym. That is my way of de-stressing. <laughs> I've got plenty of stuff to do today, like an escape room and a little birthday celebration. Hopefully play some more games like Keyforge and that later. So more videos are coming. Top 10s, reviews, you name it, it's coming. See you on the next episode. And remember, even if your heart is about to give way because it can't take the stress, calm down. It's only a game. Take care. See you next time.